I was at the gym with my first personal trainer, a bodybuilder, with the biggest biceps I had ever seen. I hired him to help me build muscle and train for my first fitness competition. So we're midway through our shoulder workout and he hands me a set of 25 pound dumbbells. Now secretly, I'm relieved because I knew I could lift this weight. So I start pushing the dumbbells over my head and he's spotting me so his hands are beneath my elbows just guiding me through the movement. And I start to get tired around the 15th rep. So I go to put my arms down and he just forces them back up to the next rep. I'm like, he was scared because my shoulders are burning and I struggle to do five more reps. Woo! Now they're on fire. And this guy, hate this guy, <laughs> forces me to do 10 more reps until my arms are dead. I mean, he literally pushed my muscles to complete failure. And I had never felt so much pain in my muscles before. But I won the competition. <laughs> As a professional fitness athlete, my sport requires me to showcase athletic skills like gymnastics, flexibility, and strength, in addition to having a muscular physique. Midway through my career, I decide I want to learn hand balancing. I hire a handstand coach and start spending one to two hours a day upside down in handstands. I devoted months to this training and even choreographed a pretty sick handstand combination that I was proud of, but it was hard. And unfortunately, I was only hitting it 50% of the time. So I started freaking out because my competition was in two weeks. When that night came, I was practicing backstage, but I kept messing up. Crap, what if I don't hit this? An hour later, it's showtime. So I walk out on stage, take a look at the audience, get down in my stomach position, and I take I was going to pick up in the handstand, straddle my legs, hinge at the hips, and slowly pull my legs into a straddle hold for five seconds, and the crowd was going to go nuts. But they did it. Because I did it. See, I kicked up in the handstand, lost my balance, and it fell out in front of everyone. And I even tried to recover, so I did it again. And I fell out of it again. And this was the first 10 seconds of my routine on the biggest stage of my career. I was so humiliated. And the worst part is I felt like I manifested it. See, at that time, I only saw failure through the lens of negativity. And my pride had never been so hurt before. A few months later, I was sitting in my office reflecting, and ironically, I'm looking at my trophies that are on the top shelf. And they were all in a straight line, like one by one. And the thing is, Success is not linear in this way. Every opportunity to win requires a risk. And that risk is failure. And in that moment, on stage, I failed to prepare with enthusiasm and motivation because I was scared and stuck in that traditional view of failure. And that negative view of failure was my biggest failure. So I got curious. There has got to be a better way for us to cope.
hold to the negative emotions we experience when we fear failure. I mean, I wanted to flip the switch, but I knew I had to change my perspective. And I thought, what if we choose to give failure positive value, like I did when I trained with weights? See, bodybuilders, they get it. They enthusiastically train their muscles to failure, and they actually get pumped up for the suffering that's to come because of what they will gain, like literally. See, when you think of failure in that context, it's easier to feel enthusiastic about failure. However, hormonally, we are not wired to respond that way. When we experience a win, our brains release dopamine, a neurotransmitter, which helps us feel happy and pleasure. And these hormones encourage confidence and motivation to engage again when we are winning. When we experience failure, our brains release a stress hormone called cortisol that puts us in that fight or flight mode or raises our blood pressure. Failure leaves us feeling shame and disappointment, something that we want to avoid because it leaves us feeling inadequate. So when you think of the last time you actually felt the fear of failure, enthusiasm was probably not the emotion you were feeling. What we are missing is how to train our mind to change the stigma of failure. Reframing our view of failure is really about enthusiasm and tapping into that power of positive psychology to redefine failure and give it positive value. This is positive reframing. And when we can see failure woo, as winning, we can finally connect the emotions between fear and confidence as an alternative route to courage and leverage excitement as a pre-performance tool using the right words and the right energy. There was a study in the Journal of Experimental Psychology where they actually looked at this pre-performance anxiety and concluded they looked at it in public speakers, in karaoke singers, and math performers, and they concluded that if we replace this anxiety with excitement, it serves as a primer to the opportunity mindset. And those subjects who got excited before their performance scored higher in self-efficacy. And man, that resonated with me because after decades of competing and lots of lessons learned and coaching over 700 athletes. I learned how to do this using what I now call power signals. Now these are energetic verbal cues that can disrupt your negative thoughts and connect us emotionally to the energy we feel when we win. Now you will find the moment that matters to you, the moment where you want to win maybe in business or in sport, you're feeling confident and you say something to yourself to hype yourself up. This will be your power signal. So when you start to freak out and become afraid, stop. Force a mental pivot and in that moment, exclaim out loud whatever your power signal is that connects you to that energy of winning. For example, now when I step on stage to speak or perform, I now exclaim, let's go baby, or I've got this, triggering my mind to win. By reframing our view of failure, we learn to enthusiastically leverage it as an opportunity to win. So this is what I want you to do. Think back to that moment where you discovered your power signal. And write it down. Start looking for opportunities to use your power signal to redirect your mind. And you can start doing this immediately. We have an opportunity to replace fear with enthusiasm. So let's leverage our deepest moments of vulnerability and retrain our mind.
go baby